Welcome to the Intermediate Revit course where you'll learn Revit the easiest, fastest and most enjoyable way possible. My name's Kyle, I'm a fifth year architecture student currently working for a residential practice here in South Australia and all we use is Revit. Revit is the leading software in the industry and if you want to work on architectural projects, you'll need to learn Revit. In this nine part course, you'll learn it the right way. In the previous beginners course, you learned the basics of using Revit by modeling up a three-story residential building. But in this intermediate Revit course, you'll be upgrading your tool set to improve your skill level and confidence using the program. This course is being released here on YouTube over the next three weeks. Otherwise, if you'd like to watch it all ad-free right now, you can do so by heading over to my website where you'll find all of the project files, materials, and course resources. To access that, you can just click the link in the description below. And I'll I'll see you there. I'm going to show you an extremely quick and easy way to add a topography or a topo surface or a surface for your site in this Revit model. This is going to be following on from the previous course, the beginner's Revit course. So if you haven't checked that out yet, highly recommend going through that yourself and actually modeling up this entire building. I'll walk you through the entire process in a four hour course. And so to get this started, we're going to be starting off in SketchUp because what we're going to be doing is adding in real life data of a site and then modeling that up in a click like that from Google Earth and then modeling that in as a topo surface inside of Revit so you can control all the points and you can add in building pads and trees and paths and it's going to be a complete topography lesson. So let's get into it. So let's start off in SketchUp. I'm just opened up a brand new SketchUp file here. The first thing I'm going to do is go to File, Geolocation, Add Location. And this is going to allow us to pick a real location in the world that we can then model up instantly. So I'm just going to go ahead and find where our site is. So you can fly to your site by just panning through the Google Earth or the Maps image, or you can enter an actual address or coordinate location. And ours is just down the road here, so we're going to go find where that is. So here is our site here. I'm going to click Select Region, and I just don't need that whole entire space. As you can see, our block is just the one here, 533. And I'm just going to find quite a bit of the site. We're not going to need too much of it. Maybe just to that end street and the road there. You can adjust the area of the location with these um, these little markers here. And once you're done, you can go over to region and hit import. And this is going to import it into your SketchUp model, as you can see just here. At the moment, it's just going to show as a map, as a flat plane. But if you go back to file, back to geolocation and click show terrain, you're going to see that it is now matching the actual contour of that site in real life through satellite data. We can double check if this is correct. I'm going to go down to um, an actual contour plan of the site. So this is our site here and you can see that there is a contour line here and they're quite spread apart. In fact, if we go have a look, uh, this line here indicates that it's 96 meters above sea level and then the next point is 94 meters. So each contour line is two meters apart, meaning that there's an elevation difference of two meters between each line. So there's quite a bit of a slope. And if we go back to our site, we can see that that is actually true. So this here would be 98 meters high. The next one would be 96 meters high, and this is 94 meters. So there's two, minute, two meters difference between these elevation points. Now, if we go to our SketchUp site, we can actually see that that's how it is. You can see that this would be about four meters higher than the bottom point there. So once we're happy with that, we can then import that topography into Revit. To do that, we're going to have to export it out as a CAD file. So if we go File, Export 3D Model, and we can just save this as an AutoCAD DWG file, that's fine. I'm gonna save this to the actual course, and we're gonna hit Export. Now if we go back into Revit, we can go to Any Plan View, and we're going to go to Insert, Link CAD, because we're using a CAD file, and by linking it, this is going to allow any changes that we make to the CAD file to appear real time in Revit. And all of the settings should be fine as long as you've got the positioning to be origin to origin, that should be fine and then to be placed at the ground floor. So we can open up that model. And as you can see, this is our site. If we go to a 3D view, we can see what that actually looks like. And obviously it's uh, not looking exactly how we want it to at the moment. So we might have to make a few changes. If we select this imported CAD file, we can see that it's got a few different layers on it. And so what we've done is we've actually imported all three of these layers from SketchUp. All we want is to show the actual terrain. So if we go to delete layers, 
we can then select the layers that we want to delete. And we want to keep location terrain, but the other two can be deleted. So we can select them and click OK. And now all, our, all we've got is our actual terrain. Now this isn't a native topography surface or a topo surface. It's not native to Revit. So we're going to have to convert this from a DWG from an import into an actual topo surface. And to do that, we go to massing and site, and then we click topo surface. The way topo surfaces work in Revit is that you can place the points and you'll assign an elevation to each point that you place. For example, if we were to place a point and we change the elevation to 200, then that point would be 200 millimeters above ground floor. And there's been a couple of times where I have needed to place points to create a topo surface, but the better way to do it, because in reality, you're usually given a site uh, DWG file, which has all of the contours for your site. A site surveyor would supply this to you in the real world. And so you wouldn't usually have to model up a site yourself. What we want to do is just convert this DWG that we've got here, which could be something that we've been given to by a site surveyor. And we're going to go down to create from import, select import instance. Now we can select that DWG file. We can then add points from the selected layers and we want it to be from this layer because this is the only layer now. And if we click OK, that's going to give us a warning, but that warning can be ignored. It's created a topo surface with points that correlate to the actual contour lines of the model. So if we hit the green tick, you can see that there are now two files on top of each other. You've got a topography, a surface, which is what we want. And then if you hit tab, you've got the original DWG file, which you can delete. And you might need to unpin that with this button here to then be able to delete that. And all we're left with is the topo surface. You can see that the surface isn't exactly in the right spot. It's not where we actually want it to be. So what you would think you would do is go to the ground floor plan and then move it into place, but you can't see it in the ground floor plan. But if we go to the site view, the site plan, you can actually see the topography there and you'll be able to adjust it and move it into the right place so that it correlates to where the site actually sits. Before we do that, I wanna show you how these points actually work. If we select the surface and hit edit surface, you can see that there are different points with elevation markers assigned to them. So this point here is 2,867.2 millimeters below the ground floor level. And there are very minimal points that we can use here because there is a very minimal contour to the site. It's just going down from east to west pretty much. And so before we go on with this, I want to show you a few other examples of sites. So if we go back to SketchUp, I'm going to delete this layer here by unlocking it and erasing it. We're going to go to the geolocation and clear the location and we're going to add a new location. Now I'm just going to try and pick something that has a few more hills and stuff like that. So if we select this region here, I'm just going to zoom in, select the region, bring this bit in and import that. Now I'm going to show the terrain again and you can see that that's a bit more gnarly compared to the last bit which was just flat. So I'm going to export this out as a 3D model, DWG and export that. Going back to Revit, I'm going to go to my, we can stay in the site plan view, that's fine. We're going to insert this next one, link this CAD file and drop this one in. I'm just going to unpin that and move it over a bit so it's out of the way. But we're going to go through that same process by deleting the layers that we don't need. We're going to go massing and site, topo surface, create from import, and we're going to select that import. Click OK. And now you can see that it's modeled up that terrain. If we go to the 3D view, you'll be able to see what this looks like. So this site contour model has a lot more elevation points, which allows us to actually adjust these. Now this process doesn't just work for real life contoured sites by using SketchUp. You could also then instead model up your own sites inside of Revit by placing points and assigning each point an elevation. Or better yet, you can create a site in Rhino and then import that in and then create that and turn that into a topography. And so that's what I did for my Studio 6 project. I modeled up my own site and that is this DWG file here. This is a site I modeled up in Rhino and then exported out in Rhino as a DWG. And so then I've imported that into Revit. All I would need to do is follow that same process by going to massing and site, clicking topo surface, and then creating from an import instance, select that again, and you can create yourself a topo surface. I hope I selected the right one there. And you can see that it's modeled that side up 
and it's got a whole lot more points than the actual SketchUp model. And so this would give us a lot more freedom by having a lot more points. You'd be able to adjust a lot more of these. But the main reason for that is because there is a lot more curvature to the site. But so there's a lot you can do with this and you shouldn't really ever need to create your own points in Revit to create a topo surface because that can get quite monotonous and boring. But then let's say we wanted to get back to this actual model. We're going to delete these two, going to have to unpin that, delete that, and we'll go back to our site plan. So how can we make sure that this is in the right spot? To do that, we're going to have to do some measuring. So what I'm going to do is go back to my SketchUp file and I'm going to turn the terrain off for this site. So now it's just a flat surface. All I'm going to do is use a line tool, choose a point that we know. For example, in our Revit model, we can see that we've got this point here and we can select that point with the line tool and then just measure out how far it is to the edge. And you can see in the bottom corner, it's about 40,000 millimeters, so 40 meters across from that point. So if we go back to Revit, we can actually see that this is rotated the wrong way around. So we're going to rotate this using the rotate tool and it looks like 90 degrees. There we go. So now what we can do is add a reference plane by pressing RP. We're going to offset this 40 meters or 40,000 millimeters if that's the project units. We can select that point and then offset this. We're going to go vertically and we know that this line here is 40,000 millimeters away. So now if we move the topo surface, we can align that to that point there. And we'll also need to get from this side to that point as well. So if we go to SketchUp, we just have a look from here to the top point. If we follow that red axis, we can see that that's about 66,000 millimeters. So again, we're going to use the reference plane tool, make this 66,000. We're going to select that point there and then come across like that. Now all we need to do is move this MV and align that down to that point. If we show the terrain again in here, we can have a look if this correlates. And you can see that it's coming down from the top point here down to that corner there. If we look at Revit, that's what it's doing. If we go to the 3D view, it looks exactly the same. Now, if you're doing this for a real project, you'd be given a survey drawing, which has a project base point, which would allow you to identify where the actual existing building is. But we don't have that. So we've just had to do this guesstimation of where it is. And if you're doing a university project or something like that, or design com competition, that's completely fine. If you're doing a documentation set of drawings, of construction drawings, you will definitely need this to be accurate. And you would get that from an actual site survey. But for the most part, We've got a site now and it looks pretty damn good. Now this is just scratching the surface of topo surfaces. There's still a lot that I want to show you. So the first thing I want to show you is creating a building pad because at the moment the site is just sitting, it's still just floating in the middle of the air. That's not usually how it would work in a real design. The building doesn't just attach to the topography. It needs a building pad. So before making any changes to the topo surface, we're going to want to create another one in a new construction phase. So to do that, we're going to change the phasing to new construction and we're going to create a graded region. If we click graded region up the top here and we're going to select the first one, create a new topo surface exactly like the existing one. And then we select the topography that's going to create another one in the new construction. You can see that it's also, if we click tab over the topography, we can select the other one and you can see it's been demolished under new construction. So then when we show the phasing to show complete, it's only going to show the new topography. This is a great way to do it rather than editing the original topography because now you've always got that existing topography there in case you need to make any more changes or you want design options or anything like that. So the first thing we want to do now is to create some building pads that the house can actually sit on because in reality, there's going to be a foundation that separates the building from the actual ground. So if we go up to the top here, you can see there's a building pad option. If we select that, the best way to create a building pad is not necessarily in a 3D view. So we're going to go down to the site plan view, but first we want to recognize that we're going to need probably two different types of building pads. One for the level one section here, we're going to have a building pad that comes down to the ground like that. And we're going to have another one for this other part which is going to cover all of the ground floor. So now let's go to this site plan and let's start modeling these in. These don't have to be perfect, but I'm going to use the rectangle tool and just model out how this would look. We're just going to roughly do that and we can change the level of this. This was for the ground floor. So the level 
as ground floor should be fine. If we click the green tick and go to the 3D view, and there you can see it's created a building pad, but that's actually going through the ground floor. For now, we just wanna make sure that that's modeled in and it's at the correct spots. And so you can see that it's currently matched up with the overhang of the roof, which is not how it is in real life. So we can try and select that to edit it again. There we go, edit the boundary, and we're going to align it to this wall. And we're just going to start modeling in this other pad as well. So if we go to building pad, we can draw in from this point here and then down to that point there. See how that one looks? And that's currently going to the ground floor, which I don't think is how it would work. This needs to go up to level one. And you can see it's now connected that actual building to the topo surface, the topography, and it cuts through like that. And this is going to need a few more adjustments. So we're going to select that pad again and edit the boundary. We can align this to that back wall and align this to that wall. And again, you can see it's currently cutting into some things, which is fine for now. Now, the great thing about doing it this way is that you can actually see how much you're cutting and filling, which might be really necessary to know if you're doing this for a real project. And so to find that out, all you have to do is select the topography and it calculates this for you. So the net cut and fill is 84 meters cubed. The fill, it tells you how much you're filling and it tells you how much you're cutting. Now we aren't cutting much out of the ground. It would only be cutting out around here so it can actually go down, but the rest of it is actually being filled. And so this is useful to know because then you'd need to be able to supply an extra 84.2 meters cubed of ground fill. Now I'm just going to run a section through this building pad and I wanna show you something cool. If we go to the section view, you can see that the ground is automatically sketched in as a ground plane. Now, if we were to adjust the height of the pads, you'll be able to see that it automatically, parametrically, I guess you could say, adjusts that fill cut pattern. Now, this is really nice because then it's something you don't have to worry about when you're doing sections and it automatically puts in those patterns. The next things we're going to be able to start adding are the trees and some paths, maybe a fence and stuff like that. But to do so, we're going to need the existing location of where these things are. So we're going to have to go back to our reference image that we imported in the previous course and then use that to then start placing these things. If I remember correctly in the last course, we might've deleted that from the file. So we're going to go ahead and relink that and we can go ahead and go to the insert tab, import an image, but we're going to have to go to a plan view to do so. So we go to the site plan, click import image. We're just going to locate where this uh, image is. And this will be in your course materials if you've downloaded the course. If you're watching this on YouTube, you won't have access to that. But if you want to get access to all of the project files for this course, including this image and some of the other ground floor plans, all of the families and materials I use, feel free to check out the link in the description below to check out the full course on my website. So essentially all we'll be doing is turning this 2D image into a 3D model. First, we wanna rotate this to make sure it's in the right direction. Going to rotate it 90 degrees. Put this on the foreground so that we can see it a bit better. Now, as you can see, we're going to have to uh, rotate it a little bit more. So to find the correct angle of the site, I'm going to select one point of the building and I'm just gonna use a reference plane to go directly straight up. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. As you can see, now that we've selected that same point, we've got an angle here. Just follow that building wall and it's gonna give us the angle of 86 degrees. To create this as 90 degrees, we're gonna to have to move it four degrees over. So we're gonna select the image and rotate it four degrees. That should now be pretty damn vertical. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna chuck this on the background again and what we want to do is scale this up to be the exact same scale as that building there. So I'm going to measure this wall and this should be 19,000 millimeters. I'm going to select that image, click the scale button or RE, and then select those two points. And we're going to then bring them out to be about 19,000. And then that should be at the correct scale. We're going to use the move tool to then move this to be directly underneath that point of the building. So as you can see, you've got this gravel driveway that comes down into the main carport. And then there's also a shed to the back where there's another gravel driveway that goes all the way around the building. To make this really easy to do, I'm going to put this onto the background. And then I'm going to just hide the topography, double pressing V, and then going to the uh, model categories and we can click on topography. We can hide that in this view. And so you can see it's not quite lined up with the actual model. So what I'm going to do is select the raster image and just rotate that maybe another two degrees. There we go, that's a little bit better. And we can nudge that just so that it looks a little bit more centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now what we want to do is create this path. 
And so to do that, we're going to be using subregions. If we go to the Massingen site tab again, you can see that there's a subregion tool. If we click on that, what we can start to do is model in where that path is going to go. Now, what this is going to do is split up the topography so that you can change the material of the path. The easiest way to do that is to go to the site plan and then we're just going to draw in roughly where this path is going to be. So that looks pretty good to me. If we click that tick button and have a look at this in the 3D view, you can see that it's now created a subregion. It split that from the actual topography. So now what we could do is change the material of this to be something that is representing gravel. And to do that, we're just going to click on the actual topography, the subregion, and then change the material from here. Now we can find something that looks like gravel. Otherwise we might have to create a custom material. For now, I'm going to use this concrete sand screed, but that should be fine. So there you can see you've got that driveway. The cool thing is that you can also add in trees and that's the site component button here. By selecting that, you can actually drop in trees. If we follow this on the site plan, we can then match them to be where the trees actually are. And so I knew that this was a really big pine cone tree. I don't know what they're actually called, but it was a tree with pine cones on it. And this was a really large tree. So I'm going to try to find the biggest tree I can, which is actually this 12.5 meter tree. And then I'm going to place that in on top of where it is there. And so you can see it's currently constrained to the ground level, which is not necessarily what we want. And you can see that it's actually not quite lined up. It's going through that topography, which is not what we want. But what you can do is go pick new host and then you can click the topography and it's going to sit that tree on top of it perfectly. So you don't have to then try and measure it out in an elevation view or anything like that. You can also just place site components straight onto the site topography from a 3D view and it's going to automatically attach it to that topography. But considering we, we want to do this in a site plan view so that we can know where the trees are, we're going to undo that and then just have to pick new host for all of the new trees. So let's go to the site plan view again and then just start to put in all of these trees and the bushes and everything like that. We're only going to place some trees because we can come back to this later when it's time to actually present this in renders and we're going to be doing a render through Enscape, which I think is going to be really cool, but we'll get to that later in the course. If you want to adjust the size of some of these trees, what you can do is actually click on it and edit the type and you want to duplicate it. So say this one was 15 meters, we're going to rename it to be 15 meters. Always make sure you're duplicating it and you can change the height to 15,000 then to make that 15 meters. And obviously the taller the tree is, the wider the crown of the tree is going to be. And so you can see that's bigger. If we look at this in a 3D view, you can see that they're not going to be on the right plane. So if we select all of those ones we just created, we can then pick a new host for all of them and select that topography. Now they're all assigned and they correlate to that topography. In the next lesson, we'll continue modeling the site by adding in the outdoor pool area, including the swimming pool, the paving and the shed. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.